Hey Youth Live, it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another Ask Youth Pastor Josh. This week's is a bit of a trickier one, um, but I know that Josh has been really praying and researching um, to answer this the best that he can. Um, this week's question for Josh is, are some sins worse than others? Uh, well, perhaps you have heard it said, uh, all sins are equal, all sins are the same, or maybe all sins are the same in God's eyes. Um, and maybe like me, when you've heard that, it doesn't quite uh, sit right. It doesn't seem like it should be true that Hitler is the same as my nana in God's eyes, right? That It seems wrong uh, to say that all sins are equal, yet we hear it over and over. My goal today is to bust that myth and to, to kind of fix it by having a look at what the Bible has to say uh, on this question. To start with, uh, we're going to look at the Old Testament. And so Exodus chapter 32 is where we're going to start. Uh, this is a, a point where God's people have come out of Egypt. God has saved them. Uh, they're now in the wilderness. They're at Mount Sinai. They've received the Ten Commandments. And then while Moses is up the mountain, uh, they reject God by melting down a bunch of gold and making an idol which they worship instead of him. Now, when Moses comes down the mountain, he sees that, and that's where we're going to pick up our story. Uh, Exodus chapter 32, starting at verse 30, if you want to have a read yourself. The next day, Moses said to the people, you have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, alas, this people has sinned a great sin. Right? Moses doesn't just say a sin. He doesn't say they've sinned lots of sins as though it's quantity that's the issue. Moses says they have sinned a great sin. It seems like there's some way in which particular sins are worse than others for this one to be particularly great. That same logic flows all the way, flavors uh, the Old Testament law. So some of you may know there's some uh, punishments in the Old Testament. So there's some crimes in the Old Testament for which the punishment is death. Things like uh, adultery and witchcraft and blasphemy, uh, the punishment for those sins was death. But not every sin uh, in ancient Israel was punished by death. Have a look at Exodus 22 sometime uh, if you'd like to. And there's some rules there for uh, the punishment for people who are caught stealing. And the punishments differ so much depending on what sort of animal they were stealing, whether they killed the animal, whether it was recovered or not. And it's not even just stealing. What if I borrow something from someone and then I break it? What if I break it and they weren't there? But what if I break it and they were there with me when it happened? What if I'd hired that thing? What if uh, I accidentally set a fire and that burned some things? All of these different situations, as you read through the Old Testament law, they all had different punishments because God knows, as well as we do, that to do justice, different sins require different punishments. Part of that is because different sins have different consequences, right? And that's not just an Old Testament idea. Even in the New Testament, Jesus uses this same sort of language. In John chapter 19, verse 11, he's talking to Pontius Pilate, and he says to, to Pilate, you would have no authority over me unless it were given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. Right? There's that idea again, right? That some sin is greater than than others, that Pilate has his sin and the one who betrayed Jesus has a greater sin. So it's not just an Old Testament thing, it's a Bible thing. Not all sin is the same. Sins are different. That's because they have different consequences. Some of those consequences are obvious in this life, right? Some sins hurt other people more, and so they uh, introduce more suffering into the world. Some sins damage us more and God loves us and loves other people. And so when we uh, hurt ourselves and others, that upsets him. Some sins dishonor him more. And so that upsets him more. And so sins have different consequences, not just in this life, but even in eternity. You know, Jesus is uh, talking to some people who've seen some of his miracles, but aren't following him in Matthew chapter 11. And he says to them, I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. There's some cities from the Old Testament who rejected God. Jesus says it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for them than these contemporaries he's talking to. The day of judgment will be worse for some based on how they've responded to God and how they've lived. 
the same kind of idea comes up in Luke chapter 20. Jesus talking again. He's talking about the scribes uh, and teachers of the law and Pharisees and how they uh, love being greeted in the marketplace and having the best seats at the feast and uh, how they uh, take from the vulnerable and oppressed. They take stuff from widows. He's talking about all of that. And then at the end, in Luke chapter 20, verse 47, he says about those guys, they will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus doesn't say, ah, it's okay, all sins are equal, so those guys won't cop it any worse than anyone else. He says they will receive the greater condemnation. Hebrews chapter 10 says the same kind of idea, but in an even bigger way. It says anyone who set aside the law of Moses, so anyone who broke the Old Testament laws, uh, died without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. Right? Once the case was made, they, they would be executed under the law. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by those who uh, trample underfoot the Son of God, those who reject Jesus? That idea, how much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by... See, not only are sins different, sins have different consequences. They dishonor God differently, they hurt other people, they hurt ourselves, and ultimately the effect of sin echoes into an eternity. So where did this idea come from that all sin is equal? Well, uh, Jesus' brother James, when he's writing his letter in James chapter 2, verse 10, writes this. He writes, uh, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point becomes guilty of all of it. Right? That someone who keeps the whole law but fails in one bit is guilty of breaking all of the law. That gives us this idea. This is where the sentiment comes from that all sin is equal. But James explains what he means in the next sentence. Here's what he says. Um, if you've broken one part, you're guilty of breaking all of it. Why? For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, it, it's a relational issue here. It's that the same God who gave some rules gave all of the rules. And so if you break any of the rules, you're breaking your relationship with God. Any sin separates us from God. Any tiny sin, it doesn't matter what our sin is, any sin makes us God's enemy. There is no sin so small, there is no um, amount that you could be good enough that your sin hasn't separated you from God. But here's how James finishes that paragraph. He says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. See, James knew that even though uh, even the smallest sin separates us from God and makes us his enemy, he knows that even the biggest sin can be forgiven for those who trust in Jesus. That on the cross, Jesus didn't just die for people with little sins. He, he died for people no matter what their sins were. So are some sins worse than others? Yeah. Yeah, for all those reasons we've talked about. But the important things are these two things. All sin, no matter how small, separates us from God. And all sin, no matter how great, is washed away for those who trust in Jesus.